guys that actually deserve it more than I do. I, they work on the car uh, tirelessly, and all I do is show up on Saturday and turn it left. So I mean, it's 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 all about it's all about the team. I was the first one with them in 1981. Me and John Lilly and Gary Zepka hired Dick to drive our sports one. Kind of getting away from his, and Uncle Rod was getting away from his, so it was it was a perfect time for us. Did you, get a, did you know much about him beforehand? No, just been uh, going to State Line, watching him. I started at State Line when I was 10 years old. My dad took me there when the first year they grew up or opened up. 56? So, 56. Holy cow. So I was 10 years old, so I've been going there ever since. So I got the, you know, as a kid you didn't know names, but you know numbers and things like that. So, yeah, that's where I first saw him, him and his uncle drive. Did you ever think you'd ever actually be part of an ownership of a no. team? <laughs> no. I thought I'd be sitting in the stands till I couldn't sit no more. Never, never dreamed of that. So who kind of Ex who got you excited about this? John Lilly. John did? John Lilly. He was the instigator. <laughs> Next thing you know, you got a sportsman's yeah. car. Yep, yep. And I knew John basically from working at Go Tire, because I hung around there and did some did some work there, and he did work in my car and stuff like that, so uh, that's how that come about. You did drink a beer or two, is that right? Uh, we've had a, we had a dollar for every beer. It's on, I got a big wall at home. The guys know it. <laughs> I mean, it's a big wall with all the pictures and stuff. So you go back and, I mean, we drink a lot of beer. I guess what didn't really help us was we had beer sponsors. <laughs> really? For that next four years, the group recorded nine feature wins and a 1983 State Line Sportsman's title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from homemade car, basically homemade. I mean, I wish there's no money to go out and buy something. Uh, you know, go to, the, go to the catalog and pick something out. Uh, me and John Lilly spent countless hours on our lunch break at Town Line Auto, uh, Bruce Macy, picking up rear end, getting bodies. All the first bodies we had, all the old gremlin bodies, Bruce donated oh, really? for nothing. But we spent, as soon as 12 o'clock come, I met with John and away we went. <laughs> I'm going to mention another name, I don't know if somebody mentioned or not, it was Joe White. That's where we built our sportsman cars, hmm. where Charlie Weber is now. That was a one little bay garage. Joe White gave up his business for like two or three summers so we could use that little garage. I'll tell you a little story. This little garage was so small, if you work on this side of the car, to get to the other side, you got on a creeper well, underneath the car to work on the other side. Because <laughs> in the corner was a big butch stove. Joe White's father used to, he used to haul out lumber and stuff. He just passed away. And uh, he'd go down to Allen Street, you get this sticks of lumber, but had lacquer on it. Tell you what, you put four or five pieces in that little wood stove, you had to open the door in the middle of winter. But that was his little, that was his little gift to us. He'd pi bring piles of wood and never take no money. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty small in there, pretty cramped. <laughs> I, was, I knew you were going to ask me that. The, ten, the first $10,000 one we won at State Line. Because it was 100 lap. At that time, Dick was like, he got to the lead, really late in the, in the race, and there was probably two or three laps to go, be a caution. And at that time, I'm going to think it was Freddie Smith or one of those people that drove for a living was all over us. And like I say, the last two laps, was just, me and Greeny was standing in the middle of the pitch, just, is this going to ever end? Because he'd get a run on him, I'll come a caution. But we finally pulled it off. Pulled out. The next week we went to get our money. I don't know if you heard this story or not. You probably did. Ahead, I, I'm probably repeating some no, other this stuff. This is great because it's ahead. a great story. Uh, of course, you had to go upstairs and sign for it, you know, that much money, you know. So it was up there, and, and Franny was there, and a couple other people. And I said, I got to cut the money from the last week. And Franny goes, Okay. He has this bag, a paper bag. <laughs> I go, oh, Okay, yeah, well, where's the check, you know? No, oh, here's your money. <laughs> It was all 20s and 50s and 5s and change. <laughs> so now we got an open hauler in the pits that you can't lock up. You can't, and everybody there knows that I went and that we went and picked it up. You know, uh, that was pretty stressful that night. I got a close eye in that in that truck because that's what pulled us through. I mean, just things like that got us kept us going. So. That's how it happened. <laughs> and he even shorted us like 93 cents or something. <laughs> oh yeah, he shorted us a few cents. 
even in his personal life, he takes everything 110%. I mean, as you know, he goes to work out, he does the racquetball, he does all that, and that related over to the racing. I mean, once he strapped himself in, winning was the only thing that he had in his mind. If it didn't happen, I mean, it, you know, wasn't right. Something was wrong. So, Dick and Barton told us years ago, racing's like a wheel with a lot of spokes in it. If one of those spokes break, that wheel's not going to turn right. I never forgot that. It's just, you know, one of the spokes, spokes come out of that thing, it's not going to turn right. All the spokes got to be in place, everything, make it work. And he said that years ago, and I never forgot that. There's times, Greg, that we were down to virtually nothing. We didn't know if we were going to make it to the next race. Monday morning, she always called Dick. What do the boys need? We've got to keep on racing. We have to keep on racing. And that went on for many, many years. She helped us, along with a lot of other sponsors, but she was always there that you guys, what you need, we're going to do it. So. I had to throw that in. It's a great because, story. Because she kept us going, I couldn't tell you how many times. Might be a little thing, but sometimes it was a big thing <laughs> that we just didn't have. Well, uh, Dick used to run Erie as, as his job. He had a couple stores over there. Well, he got to be friends with this guy that owned Glenwood Distributors, Bill Freewall. All of a sudden, he wanted to go racing with us. Sponsorship took care of itself. We virtually didn't have to, he just come along and said, I want to sponsor you guys a race car. Because well, you know why? He wanted to go with us. It was his outlet. So we were racing uh, Sharon Speedway at that time, or down that area. Nielsen hadn't had a track yet. Billy Freewall, he lived in Erie, mm -hmm. would meet us at the Burger King on 90 and Peach Street. Okay. Come across the street, because we, we'd go to our job at 5 o'clock, get in the truck and go. Big bag of burgers every Friday night. And obviously we had motorhomes. We used to play a lot of cards and all that. He loved to play cards. Worst card player in the world. But he didn't care. He was with us, and that went on for a long time. He even come, when he really got sick, in a wheelchair in a van, so he could sit there and watch us race. That's when Nielsen got it, but he, he come over and watched us to the end. Another great, great friend and sponsor. I'm going to tell you a little story. Me and my girlfriend, John Lilly, Joe Bacola, they're all sitting down like a, in front of us. We were right behind the flag stand. And we didn't see like 500 feet, three and four, you know. Going down the back stretch, Hackett still had the outside lane. And I looked at her and I go, don't let it happen to us like this. And we didn't know until he come across and had his hand out the window. So I actually didn't see him pass because we couldn't see in that little location right there. Yeah, yeah. So I said, come on, this is the time. It has to happen now, but fantastic race. Did you go out on the track? Pardon me? Did you go out on the oh, track? Oh, yeah. I was one of the first ones there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that yeah, was a great night. It's been, it's been great. I have more fun and more, more laughs. And so I'd do it all over again, and I wouldn't change a thing. I would love it. Thank you, Del. Listen, You're welcome. Fabulous. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Why you got an opportunity? You didn't know that, did you? No. Who's saying cheese? I'm a scout. We don't care. I'm not trying to say anything away from the national team that uses that.